welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is smooth power automate deployments using connection references. Let's go. So let's talk a little bit about why this content is important. Now we have talked about solution packaging on this channel before, both from an RPA and power automate perspective and power virtual agents. Now I always cautioned in those videos that you need to be careful when dealing with managed versus unmanaged solutions in part due to when you have a managed solution the expectation is that you're not making changes to it once you go ahead and import it into a subsequent environment for example you take a package you want to deploy it to production you shouldn't have to go in and then change those flows and establish connections that created an issue with managed solutions itself because you would end up making these changes in an unmanaged layer and it became very difficult to maintain and just to understand where all of your components are in the solution. But the good news is that's now out of the way. We don't have to worry about that anymore. And when deploying solutions that include flows, we can use managed solutions, which is the right way to go whenever we want to take something into a higher environment, such as a, a QA or a production environment itself. Now, how we get around this is through a new feature called connection references. And using this feature will allow us to go ahead and essentially map the connections before they actually get imported into the solution itself. So for example, I may have a flow that has an email connection, say to Outlook and SharePoint. When I go ahead and deploy it, what will happen is I will need to provide what are the connections I want to map into those specific actions inside of my flow. If I don't have any connections available to me in that environment, I can go ahead and associate those at import time. And so what this means is when we do complete the import of our solution, everything is already configured, everything is set, and I don't actually have to go in and touch or modify those flows, which is a huge time saver, makes me more productive, but also it reduces risk because I'm less likely to make a mistake when I'm inside of those flows and saving them. Now, one thing I do want to caution is that there is a limitation, I call that out here on the slide, that indicates a connection reference can only be used with a maximum of 16 flows. So depending upon your situation, that may or may not be an issue for you, but something I wanted to call out early. Before we dive deeper into the content, I wanted to let you know about an emerging community found at serverlessnotes.com. This is a community resource that covers best practices, tips, and latest announcements built on contributions by technology enthusiasts from around the globe. On serverlessnotes.com, you'll find content related to Power Automate, Azure Logic Apps, Azure Service Bus, Azure Functions, and much, much more. Serverlessnotes.com is brought to you by Serverless 360, a portal that is focused on operations and support for Microsoft Azure serverless resources. Now this is a complementary tool to the Azure portal and it helps organizations in supporting Azure serverless applications. You can find out more about Serverless 360 at serverless360.com. I will be showing you a live demo in just a few moments, but I wanted just to walk you through how I get all of this set up. Naturally, in order to use this feature, we do need to have a solution. So how we create a solution is in our Power Automate portal, we can go ahead and click on solutions and then click on new solution itself. We'll have to provide some parameters such as the solution name, a publisher, things of that nature as well. Once we've got our solution created, we wanna click into it. And then what we wanna do is click on the new button followed by flow. We'll therefore go ahead and create our flow. In this case, it's pretty simple just to demonstrate the capabilities here. I'm going to essentially go ahead and look for new emails using the Office 365 email connector. And whenever I do have a new email that includes attachments, I'm gonna go ahead and create a file inside of SharePoint itself. So the functionality isn't overly important, but I did want to show what happens when you have multiple connections. In this case, these are gonna be OAuth 2 connections using Azure Active Directory naturally. I'll go ahead, I'll test my flow, make sure it's all working, and that will be great. Um, I will be in a dev environment or my lowest environment as I'm making all of these changes. Now, once I've tested, everything looks good. I can go ahead and look inside of my solution 
And then using this drop down, go ahead and filter based upon connection references. What I'm going to discover is that Microsoft has automatically created two connection references for me using just default values. In this case, Office 365 Outlook and SharePoint. So this is great. I don't have to manually go ahead and create those values because it's already happened for me. If I did want to create my own, I can click on the new button, click on connection reference, and then naturally go ahead and create one, but it's not necessary because Microsoft's taking care of that for me. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to export our solution. And as I mentioned in the intro, we can now do so safely as a managed solution, which is really important, especially as we think about a production deployment. When we click on the export button, we're going to see a zip file that's created for us. It'll be in our downloads folder and we can go ahead and switch our environment to a higher level environment. Perhaps it's test, perhaps it's prod and then go ahead, hit up solutions and then click on the import button and then we'll be able to import the solution package that we just exported in the previous step. We can go ahead, upload it and then click on the next button and then we will have an option. It kind of depends on sort of your scenario and what you want to do, but we can enable the flow right away as part of this import. Now, this is something you couldn't do before. When you took a solution package and you imported it, Microsoft knew that there would be issues with connections and connection references. So you could never have a flow that would be automatically enabled when importing it through a solution. Now you can, if you choose to, otherwise go ahead and you know click it again and clear that check mark and then it'll basically be imported, but in a disabled state itself. Now, as part of this import wizard, what's going to happen is Power Automate is going to detect that, hey, there are multiple connections that are being used inside of this flow. And what it's saying here is we've got a SharePoint and we've got Outlook. Now, what it's prompting me for is to say, you either need to go ahead and uh, select a connection that may already exist inside of the environment that you have access to. But if you don't have one, what you're going to need to do is go ahead and click on new connection. And here's where you'll simply just have to go ahead, insert your email address and your password, much like you would do inside of the Flowmaker portal. And then basically you'll have a connection that you can go ahead and select. Once you've gone ahead and selected those connections, you can complete the import process. And what you will find is that you now have a flow that is enabled, it is on, and it's working. You don't have to touch it anymore. You can just go ahead and use it. Okay, so here I am, I'm in my dev environment. I'm going to just click into the solution that I talked about setting up previously in the slides. We can go ahead and see that this flow is uh, actually already configured, everything working. I have disabled it just because when I turn it on, I don't wanna have a race condition against the same email box. Uh, but here we have a working flow that's been tested, as you can see, and I'm ready to promote this. I'm gonna promote it to my production environment. So how I can go ahead and do so is clicking on solutions. I can select the solution itself, click on export, go ahead, click on next. In this case, we're going to choose managed, click a button, and this will just take a few seconds and we will now have a zip file that contains all of our configuration. Okay, so here is our zip file. Here's our solution. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and change my environment and I'm going to head over to my production environment and we're then going to go ahead and import this package. Okay, so we're now in our prod environment and we don't have that solution. Uh, it started with Lydia, which is the name of the user that I'm logged in with. And sure enough, it doesn't exist. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go ahead and click on import. We'll click on browse. And we're gonna go ahead and provide our file. We can now go ahead and click on next. This is that settings, advanced settings experience I talked about. In this case, we will automatically have the flow enabled. So we're gonna leave that as is, but we'll go ahead now and click on next. Now, in this case, for these specific connectors, I don't have an existing connection. If I did in this environment, I would have the uh, ability to choose them. But in this case, I'm going to have to go ahead and click on new connection. Here, I'll go ahead and establish connections for both connectors. And then I'll be able to select them. And that's essentially that 
mapping experience that I talked about previously. Okay, so the first one I'm going to create is related to SharePoint. Okay, so SharePoint is now out of the way. And now we see that because we have this connection available, I can go ahead and select it. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for Outlook. Okay, we'll now do the same thing. We'll select our account. Okay, there we have our Outlook connection established as well. Let's go ahead, let's click on import. Okay, our import has now completed successfully. Let's go ahead, let's click into our solution. Do note, we do get a, a warning message just talking about managed solutions and not being able to directly edit the components. That's exactly what we want since we're in our prod environment itself. We'll go ahead and we'll click on our flow. Now, when we go ahead and access our flow, we'll now be able to go ahead and click on it and edit it. And previ previously, what would have happened here is we would see some orange triangles that would represent that we don't have connections in place. But what we're going to find is because we use the connection references feature, those settings, those connections are already enabled. So what this allows us to go ahead and do is let's go ahead and let's just try this. Let's go ahead and send a, an email off to this process. And if we head back to the main page, we'll go ahead and be able to see our run history. We can see that six seconds ago it ran and it was successful. Now, if we head over to SharePoint, sure enough, a few seconds ago, our document was processed. So this allows us to go ahead and really streamline our deployments. We don't have to worry about setting up connections and this allows us to have our flows enabled automatically upon the completion of our import, which just streamlines the process here. And think about a scenario where you have many, many flows and how difficult and time consuming this becomes. In this case, this was a simple example for illustrative purposes, but think about having a project where you have tens of flows and how much time and risk is associated with going ahead and modifying all of those flows to establish connections. That's a place that we do not want to. So that concludes the demo for today. I hope you found this valuable. Definitely use this feature. Definitely use solutions and definitely use this feature. You're going to reduce the risk of making a mistake. You're then being going to be able to take advantage of managed solutions, which is the mode that you should be using whenever you promote into a higher level environment like a production environment. If you're not following me on Twitter, I'd encourage you to go ahead and do so. You're naturally watching this video on YouTube. Likes and subscribers are always appreciated. So I'd love to hear from you if you're, if you're finding value in these videos. Thanks and take care. We'll see you again soon on the channel. Bye.